business with a servant's heart. Servant's heart. Welcome to the podcast. Inspiration, motivation, take servant's heart. Listen to the podcast. We're all about to talk about life. Our guests will share their life story. We want you to success in life and business. We're ready and we will start shortly. We're gonna talk about life, we're going to speak on business You're gonna shine bright, we are going to witness Business with a servant's heart, servant's heart. With hosts Steve Ramon and Ray Ramona. Inspiration, education, talks servant's heart. Listen to the podcast Steve Ramona. Brainshare Business Mentors proudly presents Brainshare.us, the ultimate business education platform, delivering the proven systems, processes, tools, and knowledge that empower you to build the business of your dreams. With 13 high-powered courses encompassing over 240 lessons accessed online on your schedule. Running a business is the hardest thing you'll ever do. We've helped thousands of business owners gain the leadership, communication, and business skills needed to build the business of their dreams. We can help you. Choose your learning path. Scuba Squad is the premier membership program for today's business leaders with access to all Brainshare material and double our money-back guarantee. Brainshare Basics, the ultimate business framework course, a hard-hitting 13-week program to lay the necessary foundation to build the business of your dreams or take individual courses as you need them. Every course has dozens of lessons with video, practical exercises, precise documentation, and the opportunity for direct feedback from a Brainshare mentor. All programs have our exclusive 30-day money-back guarantee. No questions asked, don't wait. Choose your path and start today. Welcome to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. Doing business and life with a purpose serving others and achieving success. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. We created this show for you because we want everyone to be motivated, inspired, and educated to learn how to do business and live life to make an impact in the world. Who will you serve today and what impact will you create today from that service? I want to thank my two sponsors, Brainshare.us, build a business that works without you. Discover how to create a self-sustaining business that thrives even in your excuse me, in your absence. You can have a business that doesn't tie you down, will guide you through the steps to build an enterprise that operates smoothly without your constant oversight. Visit brainshare.us to learn how to set the foundations for a business that stands the test of time. With Brainshare Business Mentors, you can build a business that works without you. And pitchdb.com. Successfully connect with over 11,000 conferences, 3 million podcasts, and be a guest to build your thought leader platform and scale your business. Increase your net worth to increase your net worth. And I'm excited today. I have my guest. I am a huge sports fan. People out there that know me know I'm a, I follow sports everywhere. And this is a gentleman that got a chance to step on a major league baseball field in Fenway Park. And before the show, he's been telling me some great stories. But this gentleman's had five careers, and he's only 50 years old. Well, he's not 50. He's 82. <laughs> he's really 82, but he's 50 to me. Hey, Lou, welcome to the show. All right, Steve, thank you. It's great to be here. Steve, I want you to know I never passed 39. There you go. I've had 44 anniversaries of my 39th birthday, okay? So I've had more anniversaries than I had birthdays. But it is great. great to be with you. I appreciate you being on. You want to start with a story, and I love stories. Well, I tell you what. I, as you mentioned I was a, a baseball pitcher, and... Um, we had a game. It was the ninth inning. I was a, a closer. On back, I started off as a starter and then eventually worked into a, a relief role and had an opportunity to be a closer a couple of years. And I, um, it's the bottom of the ninth inning. There are two outs. The bases are loaded, and we're leading six to three. And the manager, I had already pitched a couple, three days. I, in fact, I know I pitched at least three days in a row. And he had told me, no, leave him tonight. We're not going to use it. Well, we're battling for a pennant, right? You know, we're battling for first place. So I come, I get the signal. Uh-oh, being left-handed, here comes the left-handed signal. So that was for me to warm up. 
I throw eight or 10 pitches and he's on his way to the mound, calls me into the game. I come in and I'm facing a guy that I've never had any problems with before. I mean, I almost like I could throw my glove on the mound and get him out. <laughs> well, Steve, I hung a curveball and he hit it nine miles. Bases loaded, grand slam home run, and we lose seven to six. Well, two o'clock in the morning, guess where Lou is? I'm walking the streets. I got that pitch in my mind. And I happened to bump into a police officer. And uh, he said to me, he said, son, what are you doing out here at this time of morning? And I told him the story. And he looked at me. And I, one of the best lessons I've ever gotten. He looked at me and he kind of poked me right on the chest. He said, let me share something with you, son. He says, in your business and in my business, you better have a good forgettery. And you know what? I've, I've used that in every book. You know, I've written 21 books, but I, I think in every book I've talked about the fact that we need a good forgettery. And yeah. I learned a valuable lesson that. Now, for the rest of the story, I came back the next day, July the 4th, doubleheader, threw one pitch and got a save, threw two pitches and got a win. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know Forgetary. how many pitches. That's it. Forgettery. <laughs> Tomorrow's and, a new day. Yeah. That's it. And you know what? We we have to understand in the rapid pace of the kind of society we live in and work in yeah. that it doesn't hurt to have a good forgettery. Yeah. So Yeah, lots going on. Life goes up. And you have to be prepared for it. So why does a glue have five different careers? Now, a lot of people have one or two, and that's great. What's the mindset? You know, just better opportunities? Tell us how. Well, I, I think I started off thinking I could be a ball player forever. Yeah. You know, I, I signed right out of high school and I went to college in all season and to assistance. That's a promise I made my mother. If, if she would sign for me to, to go ahead and go to the pros at 17 years of age, I would go to college. And I did. But the big thing was I, I'm rocking along, good career. Traded to the Yankees, best organization in baseball for years, obviously, over the years. And in the second week of the season, I hurt my arm. So everything goes from being A-OK -okay to the future being very dim. Well, in the days, those days, they did not do surgery on rot rotator cuffs injuries. You had to just wait it out. Listen. Steve, I couldn't break a window pane before. Now I really was in trouble. See, my my pitch in my game was a lot of breaking pitches, slow curveball, little screwball, a lot of that type of stuff. And I was successful with that. But every now and then you got to throw a fastball. And I just didn't have enough mustard on my fastball. And I struggled. I tried for three more years. But one of the reasons I went ahead and, and, and continued to play was I was going to college. I needed that college education and I still, well, I could add, add something to a ball club. And so I continued that uh, until I got my degree. I coached a year. I didn't count that in my five, by the way. <laughs> I, I coached a year. Realized that with a family, I had a wife and two sons that I needed to make more money. So I went back to New York, went to work for Merrill Lynch and did that for a period of five years, ended up going out to Dallas to sell the bonds on the new airport. Mm. And I stayed. I liked Dallas. My family liked Dallas. So we stayed there. And uh, But after five years of, uh, can you believe that the stock market was 200? 200 in the early 70s. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. And so I answered an ad to Wall Street Journal about being involved in training. I found out at Merrill when I'd go out to speak to a group of people, I did pretty good with it. I even did that with the Yankees on the disabled list. I, they'd send me to Connecticut and Jersey. And I always, with Jersey, I just asked, well, which exit off the turnpike am I supposed to go? <laughs> Nobody ever talked about a city, just which, which exit off the turnpike. And so basically, I... Uh, I did that for uh, speaking for 29 years. I've been in every city in the United States with 150,000 people. I've uh, spoken probably, I don't know, 3,000, 4,000 groups. 
And so I've something I really thoroughly enjoyed, but the travel, it, you know, you, sometimes you it gets old. Yeah. So I made a decision that uh, I actually would retire and I wanted to do a radio show. And so I had that opportunity, got my own show it started. And for 14 years, I, I hosted a radio show. It was for everything. It wasn't just sports. It was for everything. And to this day, Steve, I promise you, you and I will not talk politics and religion. I got enough of it. <laughs> Amen. That yeah, period no. of time. I can you, imagine. <laughs> so there's career four. I, I and if career five was a, a, a TV show I called Up Talk. I wanted to have a show where everything was geared to let's talk about what's good, not what's bad. And then COVID got that. Steve, I want to share the COVID thing with you, if I may yeah, share it with the audience. Please. Okay. I, I played on this senior tennis tour. I went to, uh, they called it the Grand, the Senior Men's Grand Prix. I went down to Naples, Florida to start. And this was my third year I was doing it, was in 21, in April of 21. We're just about that stage now. I, we played... Oh, every week for eight weeks in Florida. And the end of the eighth week, which comes at the end of uh, March, I found out I played a match for three hours and two minutes. Now, that's a long time for an 80-year-old guy. Yeah. And so I, after the, the last match, after the three hours and two minutes, I sat down and I couldn't get up. And they they knew something was wrong. Well, as it turned out, I had COVID, and I had double pneumonia. So I Pop played that. You had double, COVID and double pneumonia. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Holy mackerel! And so they didn't give me much of a chance. Mm -hmm. And then for twenty two days, I spent in the hospital, lost thirty three pounds, and on the fifth day, they had called my family and said that we just don't think you'll make it. Well, I did make it. And I, and I've, the doctor today, they checked me out. They didn't want me to go home then, Steve, but I was ready to go. I had to go with a breathing machine. And that's, I wanted to get into a different kind of environment for me. And the doctor looked at me and he said, Mr. Vickery, those tan legs saved your life. Now, you know what he meant by tan legs? I don't. All that, te all that tennis, all the outdoor oh. activities. Because every, I was on a wing with five other individuals, 75 years old or older, and I was the only one to survive. Steve, I felt like God had given me another opportunity, which he had. And uh, so I decided that I had a computer full of material that I need to share with the world. And that's the reason I'm back talking to you and on the stages, talking to people. Because I I have a I have a little different motivation maybe than most would. Yeah. My motivation is because I want to share if it's just one individual that can feel in their heart they can do a little bit better than they've been doing, then it's been worth it. That's a servant's heart. Why you're on the show. That's right. The servant's heart. I gotta ask you, you've overcome injuries in baseball, COVID changing jobs, not liking what you do as a stockbroker. What keeps you going, Lou? Well, you know, I can back up a second. How many people have you met that's been in a plane crash, an earthquake, two tornadoes, and four hurricanes? I'm <laughs> only one of the five, so I'm not <laughs> many. <laughs> well, I've been in all of them. Wow. And if you, at the, at the western part of the, the plane crash, it classifies the plane crash, but it actually, when the plane landed, the, the front tire blew out and the plane got caught in the ice and snow in Denver and hit a, an embankment and caught fire. So it was classified as a crash. Mm -hmm. it, so we had to, we had to get, uh, excuse me just a second. I got beautiful grandchildren here and one of them yes. just poked her head in the door. Bring her on to the show and let's no, look. I, I, I wish I could. She left, but she saw that Poppy was... <laughs> no, Poppy's <laughs> good, no. Oh, Family's man. important, right, Lou? 
with I tell all you, this. I'm at the age, Steve, I'm at the age where I should be having great grandchildren. And I've still got grandkids. I got them, uh, four of them here, 11, 9, 7, and 1. I got me a left hander. That one, I, he's using that left hand. Hey, man. So. <laughs> you are a busy guy. I tell you what, it, it's just, it is outstanding, really. So now that I've said all that, where was I? <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> well, I, now you added those five catastrophes yeah. you were part of. Yeah, I did those. How things. do you keep anyway, coming back? I mean, well, a lot I of people would have quit. Yeah, I, I, uh, I never thought about quitting. You know, I, I found out years ago, Steve. It takes no talent to quit. None. Just to walk away, throw in the towel, step back. It, it, you know, it's. There's nothing about that that's talent-wise. You guys had a great coach out there, a football coach by the name of Bill Walsh. And Bill Walsh, that's a quote from him. Bill Walsh says, you know what? The easiest thing in the world to do is quit. You, anybody can quit. Well, I don't, I've never thought about quitting. I, uh, it's just that I, I, I tell myself I don't even know how to spell it. You know, I don't know what the, how to yeah. spell the word. So, and I've been well, it spills over to personal and professional too. Oh, that yes, quote, right? In sports and all that, right? Well, you know, Steve, there's no place where sports ends and life begins. They're the, the, the same principles that apply, and that's a book that uh, that's still out there, and people could 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 uh, catch up with it at Amazon or favorite bookstore. It's called Win in the Head Game the key to athletic success. And we follow that up with a book that will be out sometime this year called Keys to Success, Winning the Head Game for Sales. So, you know, the same yeah. principles. So that it doesn't, it doesn't change that, that those principles are the same regardless. And it, it depends on how you, you apply them, the right. application. May I quote, may I express some, something that I, I like to tell every group Please do. That is this. There's no such thing as pressure. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as pressure. Take my game of baseball. The first game of the season is just as important as the last game. Right? Yep. Each play, each play is one play is just as important as the next play. And if we talk about pressure, we talk about the pressure is not in the situation. The pressure is in the person. We look at this situation differently, but my point is that every play, everything you do has equal value, particularly sure. on the athletic field. Yeah. So, so when we talk about pressure, we're talking about the pressure not being in the situation. The pressure is what we do to ourselves. But, but here's the but. But if we do and play hard and, and work hard and do our job to the best of our ability, every time we have that opportunity, then one of one is never more important than the other. Yeah. So there's no so, reason then to to have to concern ourselves with yeah. with pressure. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense. And, and it sounds simple, but our head makes it hard, right? It does. We do. That's we, where we make it. We make it difficult. Yeah, yeah. I call I'm that curious. pressure. Go, go ahead. I call go that ahead. pressure. I call that pressure tolerance. We have to have pressure tolerance to be yeah. really good at anything we do. Yeah, that's a great quote. That's a million dollar quote. There, I better pay you. I better write that check for you. <laughs> there you go. Well, hey, you know one what? of the things that you can spec this year, I working with Rich Kozak, and that's both a friend of ours, and. I have a, a, my brand is called a wise word. And I use words like our forgettery, pressure tolerance, you know, basically uh, attention to intention. If you're going to have an intention to do something, you got to pay attention to it. You got to focus, you got to concentrate. And yeah. that's another one of my favorite uh, terms. I, I love it. Steve, I, I do a talk called the seven non-negotiables of success there i'm not talking if if you don't have the inner drive and the desire and the commitment to do it it doesn't make any difference anyway i'm talking about what we do 
it is basically a way to say, look, you're good at what you do. You want to be great? Well, let me share with you seven things that you have to do to be great. You don't, it's no, no choice. And one of them is that you look at where you are and where you want to go. It, if you want to be really highly successful, you take where you are and you say, well, what, are, what is out there that I can do? We can, we, you know, the old statement, you know, if you do the same thing and expect different results, is a, that's a form of insanity. Well, you know, if, if, you, if you, even if you do what you've always done, you wouldn't get the same results because things are moving. Isn't that right? So well said. No, it really is. You know, Lou, what's interesting about you, I talked to a lot of people that want to write a book and they just haven't done it. You wrote 21 freaking books. <laughs> and it's yeah. amazing to me. How did you do that? Now, you know, it's an interesting. I started writing notes when I was in Pro Bowl. I always wanted to. And let me, I want to share where something here, Steve, that held me back. I started to write books. I wrote material for books in my 20s and my 30s, but I did not have anything printed. You know why? Because people kept telling me, Lou, you know, if you're going to write a book as an athlete, you write about your exploitations, you know, the things you did and all. I said, nope, that's not me. I'm not going to do that. I started writing and then making notes, Steve, because where do you go after a ball game? Where's the only thing that's basically open is a bar. And yeah. I wasn't going, I didn't need to do that. So I'd go back to my room and I'd write and make notes. I have a novel. I have one novel, but it, it, it's, it sold extremely well. I grew up in the deep South, South Alabama. In fact, segregation era. And it was a difficult time. It wasn't only difficult for the, the, the blacks or the African-Americans, it was difficult for the whites too. And so I lived close enough, well, a hundred yards from a little African-American kid my age. And guess who became my best friend? And we, uh, between the ages of nine and 13, I wrote a book called A Touch of Gray. And a touch of gray was basically about the fact that you take black and you take white and you put the two together. What do you do? You have gray. You gray. Oh, and that's so, magical. That's magical. Yeah. And that book is still available. We read, we, we updated it and uh, it's called a touch of gray by Lou Vickery. By so the who, way, uh, Steve, that, my, my website is louvickerybooks.com. L O U. Okay. B I C K E R Y books.com. And everything is available at Amazon. And if they, if somebody is interested in it. So, who is the black kid that you were referring to? Well, it's not, in the book, I call him Tater. Tater. And the reason why he loves sweet potato pie, oh. he went on to become a doctor. And, um, and lost his life in an automobile accident. Oh. But he but, became a doctor uh, from the yeah. deep south to read. That's so great. And he actually had to repeat the first grade. His his mom his mom would say, you know that 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 tater of mine, that boy he 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 the teacher he he was trying to teach class first grade, and he was always about he never doubted for for confidence. I can tell you. He always, we go fishing, he'd take a big old bucket. He said, I'm going to catch enough, fill up this bucket. He, you know, he just said, we couldn't catch a thing, but he could catch all of them. So, you know, it was just, it uh -huh. was just, uh, for, for a period of five years, it's, this is a Huckleberry Fran, Tom Sawyer type book. It's a thing yeah. these kids got in do together. And, uh, and unfortunately, the, the culture of the times caught up with it. He moved to Detroit. And, uh, but we remained, you know, pen pals and buddies for the uh, for lifetime. Such a great, especially in those times. That's a oh a great yeah story. Yeah. Very different, very difficult times. That's right. Lou, you really care about people because you bring so much hope and faith in your stories and what you've done. Am I right? Yes, correct. 
You know, I think I, I remember I've st I started talking about uh, uh, Rich, our friend Rich Kozak saying a hodgepodge, it looked like a hodgepodge. <laughs> then he said, after he started looking at them, he said, everything was timely. One of the books that made the Amazon uh, top 10 for Native Americans was I wrote a book about the uh, Creek Indians. My grandmother was a Creek Indian. So I wanted to learn about my heritage. We didn't know enough. And uh, so I, I was able to carry it back to the 1500s. So you and took your said, passions and wrote books from your passions. That's it, Kurzakov, Steve. As I look back, that's the way it happened, you know? Yeah. I mean, a baseball book, sports book, a book a great... about my growing up. Yeah. It, the Native American book, uh, it's just been, and, and then I, I have also had a couple spiritual books. I, uh, one is called Notes from God. And it took me 16 years to do that. Wow. And, th and the reason for that is that I had to be sure that, for example, let me give you an example. Hey, if you're looking for me, you'll find me at the corner of here and now. See? And then, but I had to have a biblical verse to back it up. And that was the fact of research. I you I can't tell you, probably 200 people helped me with this book uh, as far as researching it and making sure that we were, right uh, certainly there was a strong validity between what was the statement and the Bible, Bible verse. Yeah. I, man, I love everything you're saying. The audience, I, you, you've got to be, I got goosebumps right now hearing what Lou's saying. And a quick shout out to Rich Kozak. He actually named my podcast. And oh, I got to give a huge ad. Yeah, doing business service heart. He came from him at a meeting we had. He just said, kid, you got a heart. You're doing like within 30 seconds. Rich, you're amazing. And I love you. And I want to do a shout out. Um, <laughs> any That's... final thought? Well, go ahead, Lou. I, I did want to mention one other thing. Uh, my my total or my brand is a wise word activating your best life. And then the, the little subheading is the voice of generational wisdom. I want to bring what I've been, all the things I've been able to capture through the years that can, as I mentioned earlier, Steve, that can hopefully make a difference to somebody else's life as a servant. I want to be a servant. You're truly living that. And I always say experience is the best teacher. Yes. It and is. you're giving us a bunch of, a bunch of lessons to learn from today. Lou, I want to thank you for being on. Once again, what's your website so people can reach out to you? It's uh, louvickrybooks.com. And then what's the book coming out here in, in this year? It's called oh. Hello, Let's Talk. And it'll be available. It'll be available March the 12th and 13th at Amazon for, I think, a buck 99 for the ebook. And the there's a 20% discount for a couple of days on the print book. Hello, Let's Talk. You got a, you got one sold here. I'm all go. in. Lou, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you on as a guest. God bless you. I want to thank uh, you know, thank tell you guys the podcast is so powerful, and here's why. It's got a forward and reverse button. Some of the things that Lou said today that I wrote down go back and forth. I, you know, I, I would love for you, and then Lou would too, to listen and watch this whole show. But if there's five or ten minutes that change your life. Listen to it over and over. His story about baseball, maybe it's a touch of gray. Use that to motivate, inspire, and educate yourself because that's all me and Lou hope you do is we change somebody's life a little bit or a lot, and we'd be very happy. Don't forget my podcast swag, my hats, T-shirts, and hoodies. You'll find them in the link in the, in the show notes. And my TV show, Together We Serve, Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and 5 p.m. Eastern. As always, thank you for watching or listening to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. We'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you.